internet friends. Welcome to another episode of the Synergy Cafe online show featuring speaker, entertainer, close-up illusionist, and marketing alchemist, Magic Brad. It's the internet lifestyle show about career, finance, relationships, spirituality, and wellness. We're moving the online chatter over to real life activity. And now, please welcome your host of Synergy Cafe, Magic Brad. Hey, Internet friends, Magic Brad here with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative. Make sure you turn up your sound so you can hear what's going down. And I've got a friend. We had some technical difficulties, and we're back. Dun, dun, dun. And he's in Denver. He used to live in North Hollywood, and his name is Ronald. And the last name is Farnham. Yes? Yes, sir. Thanks, Brad, for having me on. Loud and clear now. This is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll start from the top, as they say. You're you're in the movie business, I understand, because I read some of your bio and stuff. But let's get to know who you are. You're married. You got kids. What's what's up with that? I'm married to my uh, wonderful wife Tracy. We actually uh, knew each other in high school, and uh, we recently we got married in 2015 in Las Vegas at the Graceland Chapel by Elvis. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. It was fun. The real online. The real Elvis. Uh. Yeah, actually, the real Elvis. Elvis is not dead, so we're friends now. I love it, I love it. You know, when I lived in North Hollywood, there was a woman that was, was it was this bigger house, and these guys renting out these rooms, and I had a room, and this other woman had this room, and she claimed to have a personal relationship with Elvis, and she was writing a book, and she's kind of one of those, you know, yeah. Oh, <laughs> a little bit. I like a little crazy. We're all a little crazy, you know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, how long yeah. you lived in uh, Denver there? I, I like Denver. It's fun. My wife and I came here to shoot another movie. Uh, we finished up a movie in Los Angeles called Hollywood and Vine that uh, I'm editing right now. And now we're preparing to shoot another movie uh, called Making Contact about a couple that comes to meet the alien race that's running the planet. Is this fiction or real? I don't know. We've been doing a lot of research, and it seems <laughs> that they might be at the deep underground military bunker underneath Denver International Airport. So that's going to be part of the storyline. Oh, that cool. The uh, base underneath DIA has an um, alien presence. I have a friend that has this thing called Intrigue Journal, and he uh, interviews. He's, he's building it up. He interviews people that have seen Bigfoot and all that kind of stuff. So that might be an interesting uh, connection for you. Yeah, I would love to talk to him. We will talk about that later. So let's see. Um, what what else are you working on? Just just movies? Uh, you're an actor too, because I saw some of your videos and stuff. Yeah, I'm an actor. I'm in the Screen Actors Guild. Um, I've been a commercial spokesperson, been in movies and TV shows. Uh, right now, this year, I'm focusing on um, directing and finishing, ho editing Hollywood and Vine and getting it distribution. So I haven't really been doing too much acting out here in it. In uh, Colorado, I've just been busy editing and producing and putting out a couple of documentaries. I'm going to um, put out a, a documentary about the Illuminati and uh, alphanumeric communication system that they use, like hidden symbolism. Well, if you're looking for distribution, are you familiar with the New Age trade show that's out there? No, uh, no, uh, I'm not. There's an organization called INATS. It's the International New Age Trade Show. And they do it, I think, uh, they, they used to do one of them in Florida and one of them in Denver at the Denver Merchandise Mart. But that would be a great place for you to connect. Yeah, International New trade Age show. Trade Show. New Age Trade Show. Yeah, INATS. Awesome. Check that Just out. Just writing that down. Yeah. I like to spread my knowledge amongst the world. <laughs> Me too. That's why I decided to put it in books and movies. Good. Well, let's talk more about that. Why don't you want to share more about uh, what's going down there in Denver as far as your movie? When are you looking to have launch the movie? Or is that something you don't even know yet? Hollywood and Vine. Um, I want to launch it, I would say, April or May. Because I'm almost done editing it, and then I have to do some color correction and sound and special effects and um, and sound effects. So it's going to take me about another six weeks. I have I'm almost done with the with a dirty kind of a rough version that I'm going to send out to the producers to, for feedback. So 
I'd say in a couple of months it'll be ready for distribution. You know, I might have another guy to connect you with. Um, I had interviewed him. He's an Amer Armenian dude that uh, lived out in California, but he's in New York, and he's got something where he gets funding for movies. And I'm trying to remember what really? the th yeah, it's a, it's a cool thing. It's a crowdfunding um, thing where oh, people yeah, yeah. people can invest I mean, in movie, these. Indiegogo. No, 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 no. No, it's just, it's a different kind of concept. It's um, I'll have to look it up and get it to you. I think it's something real, something like real funds or something like that. Real. Okay. But I'll get it to you. It's a it's a pretty interesting concept because what he does, he seeks out investors that want to invest in movies. They look at the movie and say that might be something that'll take off, and then they they get paid dividends off it. So it's an investment. He's his background's in real estate. I don't want to talk about him. Let's talk more about you. But I'll get that to you. So let's see. Um, so where do you do your? It sounds like you bounce around a little bit to different places and, and established uh, different uh, movies and things. Because you said you were in Hollywood, and didn't you live in Florida for a while? Yeah, I lived in Florida. I started a, a reality show in Florida that I went to LA with and continued it there, called The Ronald Show. In fact, uh, the first episode is on DVD on Amazon. It's just called The Ronald Show. And then uh, I shot that movie in L.A., and I did a lot of work on studio-level productions like TV shows and movies. And then I finished that movie in L.A. and now went to Denver, and I want to shoot a movie. We, my wife and I are going to shoot a movie in Denver here. And then when, after that, we want to go to Boston and shoot a movie there. And then we want to go to Paris and shoot a movie there. So that's, that's cool. Kind of <laughs> that's cool that you're kind of just – you're able to just take advantage of the mobility and uh, travel to different places and – and build movies. That's pretty cool. That's a neat idea. I like that. We want to go all over the world and, and write books and make movies and documentaries. Very cool. I was just watching a bunch of ayahuasca documentaries. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ayahuasca, the DMT. Uh, yeah. My wife and I were talking about DMT. It's the, uh, that, the God drug. You know, it's only released in your brain when you're born and when you die or when you uh, take in some ayahuasca and have kind of, I guess... You can really connect to the source, they say. That. Yeah, it's uh, pretty interesting stuff because uh, I, I pondered it myself. I'm 60 years old, and I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do any drugs, and I, I don't look at this as a drug. It's actually something that's already in your system. It's just enhancing it, and it's really about uh, connecting with the spirit and the, the other levels and aliens, and it's pretty cool. Yeah, communication bridge. There you go. Way to see the future. The exploring higher realms of consciousness, so to speak. I'm into that. You can see all my cool stuff behind here. I got the little uh, diffuser unit for essential oils and the fountain and all the cool stuff back there. So let's get back at it. What is it that you're looking that uh, for the, anybody that's watching this, that, uh, that how you want to connect? Who are you looking for? Um, well, you mean how they can connect with me or what I'm trying to do with the movies and the books. Well, first, what you're trying to do with it so that uh, they, they have a reason to connect with you, and then you can tell us how to get a hold of you. <laughs> well, I used to work for the Department of Defense as a counterterrorism analyst. I was I had a top secret clearance for 13 years, and I realized that the government's not trying to stop war. They're perpetuating war and this rhetoric as far as terrorist activity goes. So my goal and my wife's goal is to end war planet-wide and end poverty and so i've come up with the solution and now i'm injecting and infusing the solution in these series of steps into my books and movies so that people know how to both take control and responsibility of their life and how to end war and also end poverty by taking control and responsibility for how they handle their negotiable instruments cool so you think that uh the the ability of ending war is kind of like we got a war in our head because we're going through should i stay in the house or should i go out should i do get some work done or should i relax we always got that war going on in our head do you think that that's is that what you're talking about you get into a meditative state where there is no good there is no evil let's just be well no i'm really talking about the human race turning their back on the governments that are that are there are corporations that are posing as governments and one of the first things that everyone in the world has to do is quit working for the military because politicians don't fight wars. Right. They sign, they, they create the war, and then they hire people to go over and kill other innocent civilians 
and and soldiers who are unwittingly working for corporations that are posing as governments. The word government actually translates to control mind. Mentis is Latin for mind, and govern means control. And so they're mind control corporations that have enslaved everybody through their monetary system and and basically financial slavery. And so I'm working to um, send out the information so that people understand how we can stop these psychotic corporations. I totally get it because it's about money. And the reality is, is when you're making missiles and employing a lot of people, you don't realize that when that missile lands, it's unemploying a lot of people. There's collateral damage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you know, money, money is gold and silver and everything else is a negotiable instrument. The, the, those federal reserve notes that you have in your wallet, mm -hmm. those are negotiable instruments. They're actually promissory notes. And you and me and everyone by law, according to the Negotiable Instruments Act, the Bills of Exchange Act, and, and certain statutes and codes, we have the legal right to make, sign, and tender for value promissory notes that must be accepted by banks, otherwise they're committing misconduct in public office, which carries a maximum penalty of life in prison. And I've already submitted over $150 million in promissory notes to 16 different banks, the IRS, and the tax franchise, California Tax Franchise Board, and they're all dishonoring them. And so I'm starting a class action lawsuit, and now I'm getting other people on board writing their own currency, their own promissory notes. Oh, that's pretty deep stuff. I know that, uh, you know, to me, when I talk about energy and stuff, that money is just a byproduct of, of your work, and, it's, and money is just a method of measuring that exchange of hourly work for, we'll give you this much per hour because you emitted this much energy. But that's a... That's all determined by the person that's paying the money is what you're kind of saying is like, uh, you know, you put out your sweat equity for an hour and it's only worth 20 bucks. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Well, we're programmed to think that we're supposed to work for a living for some company that's going to pay us these promissory notes, Federal Reserve notes that we're going to go and spend on stuff, whereas the whole system is backwards. We really shouldn't be working for anybody. We ought to be able to write our own currency and have it accepted for value, and it's not. And basic, and there are homeless people who can write their own promissory notes if they want, and I'm, we're gonna start talking to the homeless people here, starting here in Denver, but yet everybody's been enslaved in this financial system, and they have been indoctrinated through the education system. The Department of Education of the United States of America Corporation has indoctrinated everybody into a certain way of thinking that's totally backward from how we should be living. Well, we could go on forever on something like this because I, I totally get it. I, I often say like someone says, how much should I charge? Because I do, I do some marketing consulting. How much should I charge? Well, that is very, very nebulous. It's not how much you want to charge. It's how much the other person is willing to pay. <laughs> and then it's to come to that agreement. Yeah. And like, what's the value right. of a $100 bill or a glass of water? The water is more valuable in the desert. And a hundred dollar bill might be better at a restaurant. Exactly. So, so it's all perceived value, and like what you're saying is the banks. I think originally they had banks, and we'll we'll hold your money for you. And then the banker thought, why should I just hold this? I should um, I should make a little bit of money off of this. And they created this little digital money thing. When the reality is, is why don't you just help me? I'll help you, and we'll grow. Exactly. <laughs> cool beans. The humanity has kind of been lost, and uh, humans aren't really out for the betterment of mankind they're more out for themselves and, and it's really kind of a greedy affair that we're living in well isn't, isn't part of it though forgive them for they know not what they do some of them i mean on a real deep level as a human they're they're not maliciously trying to do that but then they do it out of fear thinking that i need to have more because they're they have that lack mentality then they get into this you know i got a lamborghini why not get a maserati and they're making more and more, and then the other people are walking on the streets eating crap out of the dumpsters. Yeah, fear and rampant ignorance has pretty much turned the United States into a third world country. And, you know, the United States of America is a corporation. The United States is the states united, a series of countries that we refer to as states. Countries have governors. Corporations have presidents, secretaries, treasurers. That's how you know the United States of America is a corporation and that the Constitution for the United States of America is actually the Articles of Incorporation and the preamble of the uh, Constitution is actually the executive summary. It says, we the people of the United States made the United States of America. 
uh, it says it right there. It's people that created a corporation, and we own that corporation. Those politicians, police officers, they're supposed to be working for us right. instead of finding, finding us. Exactly. So you got a mission. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And your work cut out for you. This for fun and entertainment. In fact, our production company is, is Enlightenment Through Entertainment. I'm going to counter the rhetoric that's being put out to program people negatively. I'm deprogramming them and reprogramming them with real, accurate, truthful information that can set them free, end war, end poverty, and bring us into a thousand years of peace, like what it says in the Bible. Well, let me throw out a couple things to you. Uh, first, I want to ask, how do we get a hold of you if what you've been talking about is of interest? How do we get a hold of you? And then I want to ask my favorite question. But I have all sorts of other stuff that's going in my head, too, because I have this thing called Recycle Peace and the concept of putting together the peace police. And you're talking about all this, uh, this, these, this um, you said, enlightenment through entertainment? Yeah. So, so the, the programs you got to do, they can't be too serious. they got to be a little lighthearted. But with a serious note. I mean, that's how comedians do some of this stuff. And all of a sudden you have this, they're right. <laughs> that kind of thing. Well, if you see the movie, when, I'll send you the, the, the uh, teaser for Hollywood and Vine. I'll even send you the uh, rough cut that you can't show anybody. And you'll see that I interject humor, um, outlandishness, kind of craziness uh, with a message built into the dialogue. But it's really more... You know, it's a fun movie to watch. It's an action adventure. Everything that we do is going to be action adventure entertainment. But the dialogue and the message is going to bring, you know, program you in a better way than what we're being programmed right now by traditional movies and TV shows. At least open it up so you can kind of see the other light. Yeah. I got it. Definitely, okay. Because, you know, we can give people all the information. They say knowledge is applied. Knowledge is power, but really knowledge applied is power. So you can give a people all of the knowledge, but if they don't apply it, then they're That's still right. not going to have any power. Exactly. Well, uh, Cher, how do we get a hold of you? Is there a simple domain to find so we can uh, connect? Um, you can just email me at farnham.ronald at gmail.com. And you can also find me on Facebook. Just type in Ronald Farnham. And if you see all my books and stuff on Amazon and DVDs, you'll see my picture and then you I'm wearing like a green shirt, but you type in Ronald Farnham or Farnham.Ronald at Gmail and you can get a hold of me. And if anybody wants a template of promissory notes, uh, I want to continue um, with this class action lawsuit so I can send people the template on how to write a million dollar promissory note or any amount that they want to pay off a bill or their mortgage or their home, tender it to the bank for value, and then see if the CFO will accept it. Interesting, offer. interesting. Because it kind of makes sense. A promissory note is. Um you give me this, and I, will, I promise that I will full, I will reciprocate, right? Fulfill the obligation. Terms yeah. and conditions say fulfill the obligation. Exactly. I have a few books. How to write a screenplay in 30 days or less, The Second Coming of the Messiah, um, Hollywood and Vine, and a couple of DVDs, True Stories, The UFO Abduction of Rob Amos, and Renonymous, which is the first step on how to <laughs> take down the global military industrial complex. Deep. Okay, Ronald. Well, here's the, the my final question, and then we'll get off the air. If you want to stay on, we can chitty chat if you want, unless your phone runs out of battery. But uh, here's the big question. That's the big why question. Why are you doing this? Why aren't you continuing to be an actor? Or why don't you open up a ski resort? Or why aren't you like uh, running a chain of In-N-Out Burger restaurants? Why are you doing what you're doing? Well, when I work for the Department of Defense at Headquarters Special Operations Command, and I Pathfinder trainer of special forces analysts, which is an all source intel software platform so that we can use link analysis and do any kind of thing that we want to anybody around the world. I came up with a solution to end terrorist activity globally and I submitted it to the NSA and they rejected it and um, they didn't want to stop war. So I resigned and I made a commitment to myself to just to end war and poverty because I see the big lie going on. And so my motivation is that I don't care about money. I don't care about comfort. I don't care about really entertainment. I care about spreading this message, and I'm doing it the best way I can with the books and movies. And I'm going to spreading a one-man show called The Second Coming of the Messiah, that where I can get a crowd of people in there and go around the country and train them on how to um, end war and poverty and live in a, a fruitful, abundant, peaceful world. 
Well, with that, we will sign off with that uh, fruitful, abundant, peaceful world. That sounds like a good one. And I'll close this thing off. And if you want to hang on, we'll chat a little further. So, Ronald, I appreciate you taking the time. It's, uh, it's a great mission you got going. Thank you, Brad. And thanks to uh, Synergy Cafe. I really appreciate it. You're doing good work out there. Okay, peace. Peace.